The evolution of your marketing will be the catalyst for the evolution of your business. And the evolution of your business will provide you with the freedom to focus on the evolution of your life. This is Evolved Marketing with Andre and Brian. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Evolved Marketing with Brian Brewer and Andre Jermajev. So we go, before we get started, I want to share a story I heard during the weekend. Um, depending what time you're listening to this, might be in the morning or so you can start a day strong or it might be at night, you know, so you can finish the day strong and then this will for sure motivate you. So over the weekend, I heard a story about, you know, Myron Golding, you know, he told a story about a family of eagles. So the eagles had babies and they were so excited to fly because every day they will see, you know, mama eagle fly and get them food. So the baby eagle kept asking the mom, if they could try and learn how to fly, right? Well, the mom would always tell them, no, it's not time yet. You know, you're not ready yet. And eventually it got to the point where it was time. It was time to take the leap and see if they were able to fly or not. Um, so it was time for the babies to start learning how to fly. And they were super excited about it. So one of the babies jumped on the mama's mama eagle's back and then they got really high. And then Mama Eagle lets go of the baby eagle and the baby eagle just screams their, her, his lungs out, falling all the way to the ground. And before they hit the ground, the Mama Eagle poof, comes and scoops up the baby eagle. Now, the baby eagle was so scared, super terrified. And basically, he, he did not want to do it again because it was such a traumatizing moment that he was falling all the way to the ground, but then the mama eagle scoops him up. So the next day, it was time to try again, right? So the baby eagle, it happened again, you know? The mama eagle goes super high and let go of the baby eagle, and the baby eagle once again falls all the, all the way to the ground. Mama eagle scoops him up, and then this happened for like, you know, a couple more days, and then it just kept happening, and it kept happening, and the baby eagle kept being super scared about it. So it got to the point where it had to happen again. So every morning they would do this. And then they go all the way up. The mama eagle lets go of the baby eagle. And then the baby eagle catches some good wind and then starts floating. The wings spammed up. And then the baby eagle started flying. So the reason why I'm sharing this story is if you ever feel like you're rock bottom or you feel down, you know, you do not need to worry. You know, in order for something to go up, it first needs to go down. So this can work for your business, your personal experience, and more. You just need to trust the process. So Brian, I wanna I want you to share a moment, like you know, you felt like maybe like the baby eagle at some point in your life. You know, maybe that's you were... a great story and a great introduction. Thanks, Andre. It's uh, great to be here uh, on another episode. And uh, I was just, I, I, I've I've always wanted to see Myron, and I keep missing him at <laughs> events. And um, to me. Everyone just always tells me he's so amazing. He's so powerful. That's a great story. And, you know, back to your question, Andre, you know, I think back um, to, to a lot of instances where, where, you know, you, you have to trust the process. And before I give some specific examples here, I will, uh, I will say that I wholeheartedly believe after um, the benefit of hindsight, looking back on my life, right that if we pay close enough attention and trust the process, as you say, um, and you illustrated in that story, that the universe, I believe, actually conspires to help us and, and not hurt us. And you do have to trust the process because the eagle was made to fly, just like I think we are, as humans, um, designed to fly in our own own little way. Now, obviously, I I do not have super hops. I I I could never dunk a basketball, even though I'm six three. So I don't think I was designed to fly like Michael Jordan might be designed to fly. But yeah, I think we're designed to fly, and I think the universe uh, does conspire to help us. So I think back um, to my life, and you can take this um, as as far back as as you want to go, and, and look for instances where, man, it seemed really really crappy at the time. Um, but, but looking back, it's like, wow, my life would have been completely different. Um, if, if it didn't, didn't go the way that it did. So I think of one example and, and, and just to kind of, um, set this up for everybody so we can completely understand. I started my digital marketing journey 
in 2012. This is right after uh, my first daughter was born. That's when I did the Google search. You know, how do you make money online? I was working in the restaurant business. We At the time, we were living in in um, in San Diego. And uh, I always say we weren't poor, but we didn't have a whole lot left over at the end of the month. And sometimes we didn't have any left over at the end of the month where we had to dip yeah. into to our credit cards to buy the diapers and stuff. So um, living a good life. Obviously, we're in San Diego. Um, but, uh, you know, I think back to my journey in the restaurant industry. And at this point in 2012 with a brand new daughter, I didn't want to be in the restaurant industry anymore. But if we rewind uh, four years prior to that. So back in 2008 and in even late 2007, that's all I wanted to do was be in the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. I loved the restaurant industry. Um, I went to college for food industry management. That's not necessarily gearing you towards the restaurant industry, but it has to do with supply chain management and agribusiness. Uh -huh. So I really wanted to understand everything. So going back to 2008, I really, really, really wanted to be in the restaurant industry and I wanted to manage the biggest restaurants and I wanted to work my way up through restaurant groups and I wanted to someday own restaurants. And at the time I was still living in Michigan and we um, had this opportunity and it was a, an opportunity in Chicago and I was going to fly out to Chicago for the day because I was going to interview with a group that was called Let Us Entertain You which is a big restaurant group, mostly based out of Chicago, but they probably have um, restaurants in other parts of the country now. What, what kind of a restaurant was it? They have, they're one of those restaurant groups where they have a bunch of different, like they had an Asian fusion restaurant. They had a, you know, they had probably a steakhouse. They had a bunch of different gotcha. companies all, you know, what I would say is higher end. It's not fine dining, but it, it's higher end. You know, this, this okay. is uh, it's, it's pretty nice. And the cool thing was, is, the restaurant I was going to interview for was Shaw's Crab House in downtown Chicago. And there will be some people on this podcast or who are listening or watching or tuning in who know what Shaw's Crab House in downtown Chicago is because it's one of my favorite restaurants uh, in the world. It's old school. It's uh, amazing. You know, it's fresh uh, oysters and crab and great wine lists and, uh, you know, big, big uh, numbers and huge dining room and, and, you know, crazy cool bar and, and all the cool stuff that you want to go if, if you really are into restaurants. And I was into restaurants and I was super, super excited because I was being flown out to, uh, to, to interview, to manage this, this, I don't even know what it did. $20 million a year restaurant, $15 million wow. a year restaurant. And this was a big step up from the $3 million a year restaurant that I was managing in Michigan. So I was super excited. And I knew I'd nail the interview. I knew I knew the business. I knew the numbers. I knew the front of the house. I knew the back of the house. I was a good manager. I was great with my staff, but I also was was firm. I could hire. I could fire. I could do everything. I, I knew I, I was going to nail this. And I flew out to Chicago, and I was I was uh, super excited. Flew out in the morning. I was going to interview all day long and then fly home at night. And I did interview uh, all morning, went out to lunch, and we actually ate at Shaw's. And uh, I just knew the interview was going great, and it was going amazing. And I was I was super excited, you know. So I flew back to Michigan that night uh, thinking to myself, gosh, I am going to be a manager at, at Shaw's Crab House in, in downtown Chicago. I am going to be making twice as much money as I am at this tiny little restaurant uh, in Michigan, mm -hmm. A and B. I'm going to work for a great restaurant group. I knew I nailed it. And um, a couple of days later, I found out I did nail it. They wow. really loved me. Um, the problem was, is they had two Shaw's Crab Houses. They had the Shaw's Crab House in downtown Chicago, and then they had the Shaw's Crab House in Schaumburg, Illinois, which mm. you don't have to know much about Schaumburg, Illinois, other than it's 45 minutes outside Chicago and it's in the suburbs and it's much smaller and it's not downtown Chicago. And that's what they wanted me to go manage because they felt with my experience, I could really turn that restaurant around and help it do the numbers that it should be doing. And mm -hmm. They also said that was the clearest path to being a managing partner with, with a restaurant at Let Us Entertain You, which is a big deal. The problem was, is I was devastated because I didn't want to work in the suburb. I wanted yeah. to go there. I was, I was 20 in my twenties. I wanted to move to downtown Chicago and manage a restaurant in downtown Chicago. Um, so I was, I was devastated. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. I just was like, no, I, I, I turned it down. I said, if, if, if I'm not working in downtown Chicago, I, 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 I can't take this. This is not my dream. This is not what I want to do. This is not the plan I had. This is not the vision I saw. Um, 
And they said, well, that's great. That is the only offer that we're going to extend to you. We'd love to have you. But if, if it's not what you want, then, you know, it's probably time we part ways. And we did. And I never took the job. Um, but luckily, um, short while after, uh, started dating, getting serious with one of the girls at the restaurant I was working at in Michigan. We decided to move to Portland, Oregon. We got married. We moved to mm-hmm. San Diego. We had kids. After kids, I started researching this whole how to start a business online thing. And it has yeah. evolved from there. And now all these years later, um, I can really look at at that moment as pivotal. Had I taken that job, um, I'd probably be in the restaurant industry. I probably would be living in downtown Chicago. I probably wouldn't have the same wife I have now. I definitely wouldn't have the same kids I have now. And I Completely certainly wouldn't life. be one of the one of the top affiliate marketers, digital marketers, um, you know, in the world right now, uh, having this amazing podcast and, and uh, living just the the the. I mean, I know it's cliche and it's tossed around, you know, laptop lifestyle. I mean, you know, Andre. I mean, we live it. We really live it. Yeah, I yep. choose to come into the office on a regular basis, um, but if if I didn't want to, if I really wanted to work from the beach, even though it's really hard to see your computer screen on the beach, I've tried it. It's actually miserable <laughs> working in the sun on the beach. Um, but if I really wanted to do that, that could be my reality. I have that type of freedom. Um, so you just gotta, you gotta trust the process and, um, keep working hard. And when opportunity comes, you know, make sure you're prepared for the opportunity, but, but understand like, you know, it depends on what you believe, but you are meant to do great things. And the universe, I believe will conspire, um, to help you not hurt you. So that's, yeah. that's my story. I don't know what you're expecting, but hopefully that, that was in line with what you no, had. Mind, Andrew. I, <laughs> I love it. You know, um, a lot of people, you know, they go through like, uh, some t- stuff, tough periods of life of their life, basically. And it's your, depending on how you act with those type of things, you know, it's completely up to you. Basically, nobody's going to tell you how you should be acting and how, you know, if you're going to get a negative or, or something positive out of something negative. Right. So, it's just crazy how much of like, you know, an evolution, you know, everybody has, you know, depending on business on personal life and, you know, experiences. And yeah, like uh, for me, like there's, you know, aside from, you know, what happened with me and my wife, you know, before this, I was working super hard in the restaurant as well. And then it got to the point where um, I messed up, right? Like I got in trouble with uh, the police at some point, you know, and um, I ended up getting a DUI, you know, because I was drinking and driving. So that actually happened in 2014 for me. So basically because of this happening, you know, I had to go to these meetings. I had to um, basically go to stop working as much so I can fix whatever was going on with, you know, the legal stuff um, and all of this. Basically, it took me from becoming a manager. So basically, as far as my career in the restaurant, that was like the lowest point I had because it delayed me a whole year just because that happened you know so for that whole year it was i was just trying to fix that and you know um keep working but i was working so hard you know like it was right there you know and then boom one mistake and then everything was gone for like a whole year and after that i just kept working hard kept working hard and eventually i did become a manager but that's a whole year you know that i was just devastated you know you know it's crazy when you talk about that um you know I'd be curious to know, looking back now, you know, now that you've completely shifted, um, you, you've had what most people would call um, a fair amount of success with, with the new, with the new digital marketing career and all that. It, now, looking back at that year that you lost now, does it seem like it was, uh, you know, forever still, you know, cause I know at the time, like when you're, when you're, when you're set back a year or, or when you're trying to start something new and you're trying to, maybe you're trying to create content to grow a YouTube channel. Maybe you're trying to uh, start a podcast and you're pumping out episode after episode. Maybe you go on a new platform um, and it's, you're just not seeing the success. You know, it seems like it's taking forever, but I mean, really looking back now, did that year that you lost out really, I mean, did it really affect your life today? Well, in a negative way by any means or, or yes or no what do you think yeah uh, not at all i mean of course you know it sucked <laughs> it was yeah. horrible right um but i feel like it it, it made me better it made me uh, mature in a, in a in a different way right because we, back then you know i didn't have a daughter you know i did meet my wife but we weren't 
you know, it's that serious, right? We're still in dating stages. Um, but yeah, as soon as that happens, you know, I, I decided to basically change my life. You know, I was like, okay, this, this will never happen again. Since then I never drink and drive and do this. And this was also before my daughter was born. So as soon as she was born, I, I, I already had like the mentality of, okay, I can't mess up anymore. Right. You know? Um, and how but and I, how much worse would it have been if you would have, have had to go through that after your daughter was born exactly. or when your daughter was 14 and she could, you know, that was when she was in her formative years where she's learning about alcohol and driving, you know, and that's the mm-hmm. example. I mean, how fortunate, obviously, you know, obviously you and I, I I'm sure neither of us condone drinking and driving. We've all dumb, done right. dumb things. And I, I think everybody listening mm-hmm. to this podcast has done maybe things that they regret, regret, but but if it was going to happen, I'm sure you feel fortunate that it happened when you were younger before your daughter than than after or, or you 100%. were later on in life. Mm-hmm. Yep. One hundred percent. You know, just picturing like what if my daughter was born, you know, what if she was even in the car, you know, like just things like that. Right? Like, like I'm just so thankful it happened early on that way. It made me better as a person. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and that's it. And that's just all about what trust in the process. Right. Exactly. Yeah. In the process. Yeah. And I think yeah. that relates directly to anyone who's who maybe is listening to this and, and it is a different phase of their business, whether they're just getting started or whether they're trying to evolve their business or whether they're trying to grow or scale. You know, there's always going to be challenges where it's like nothing's working. This is so frustrating or or blah, 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 blah. All the excuses. Right. Um, but the thing is, is, is in hindsight, after the fact, once you've had your breakthrough, once you um, started scaling your business once you started seeing the success or at least some form of the success that you were so desperately chasing all that stuff doesn't even seem relevant anymore and it, it even if it is relevant it is only as a benefit to you because it helped you grow it helped prepare you for the challenges that you were going to see going forward so you know I still have a way to go I still have bigger plans I still want to grow a business but you know, if, if I stopped today and stayed at this level, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I would think that, that it would be, uh, you know, as far as affiliate marketing go, it would have been a, a pretty successful run. Um, you know, looking back, like, you know, I just appreciate all the struggles, um, that I, that I had along the way. Yeah. 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 And I, I, and when, well, as soon as it happens, you don't even know, you know, you're like, ah, damn it, you know? But now, you know, the older you get, you know, you start looking back and you're like, okay, well, I'm glad this happened. You know, like, well, you're not glad it happened, but you you turn the, the experience into something good. You know, like I think about it all the time. You know, what if I never came to the United States? You know, you know, I, right. I, when I first got here, it was horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, know? I but can imagine. I look, yeah. And now that I look back at it, you know, I'm glad things, you know, like at least how you say things happen for a reason. Um, and you see yourself, you know, evolve your life, you know, as in a sense where everything just starts fitting in, you know, mistakes will happen, but then it's just the way you act with those mistakes is is who who, is what makes you who you are basically. Yeah. Do you think a lot about, you know, um, how coming, uh, to America, not, not changed it long-term, but that experience of going through it, um, has made you stronger or maybe prepared you better for, for your business? Because I know like there's a lot of people who go through things at a young age, whether it's, it's moving or, you know, changing high schools or, or, you know, and, or, or, you know, a great recent example that luckily, uh, you know, I didn't have to go through, but, you know, I think, I think about all the, the seniors in high school who, who missed their senior year because of COVID, you know, back in 2020 and, mm-hmm. and even 2021. And, you know, maybe it's a parent divorce, you know, everybody goes through things that, that, that is, is tough. And I, you know, I, I can't imagine there's much tougher than completely leaving your country and coming to a country that, I mean, you, you know, no experience, you didn't speak the language, you know, you know, like what, what are some of the, you know, benefits of that? How can people look at, you know, like, how can they relate to that story and, and think of, think of it as a positive light? Yeah, so um, as far as like moving to somewhere new, I was pretty much used to it, to be honest, because I I will always jump from state to state in back in Peru. Um, my dad had a really good job. He was a regional manager for um, a cookie brand all the, all over Peru. 
So we're always going from place to place, maybe like two years here, three years there, five years there, one year here, you know, so we're always moving. So I, I have friends all over the place, right? Um, but then when it, it was time for us to come to the United States, you know, to California, um, first of all, the language barrier was really difficult because <laughs> I did not speak any English at all. And I was 14 when I first got here. So as far as missing stuff, you know, the example that you gave about, you know, um, the high schoolers missing their senior year because of COVID. I never went to a quinceanera or a sweet 16 because I was 14 and it took me like three years, four years to barely get used to um, speaking the language. So barely get used to um, having new friends, you know, that spoke English because it, like I said, it was super terrifying. I was super shy or I feel like that made me even more shy than what I was just because mm -hmm. I wasn't comfortable speaking it. It was it was really tough for me. Um, but the more I started learning, you know, the the more I started easing out, you know, um, by, th by the time I got to my senior year, then that's when I barely started having like a group of friends, you know. So I went from having so many friends all over the world, sorry, all over Peru to not having anybody. I, I only have my family, basically, you know. So from um, freshman year to senior year, barely in senior year, that's when I finally found a group of friends that... I actually had, you know, I was able to communicate with them efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Um, now, how's it in, in, in now today, do, you know, that experience, do you, do you draw strength from it or do you think oh, it, yeah. you know, it's one of those situations where it made you tougher and more, uh, you know, able to handle and handle the challenges of, uh, of your business, of starting a new business, of, of going out and trying new things or. Yeah. Well, um, the whole language barrier, you know, that's the most difficult thing that I had to go through, basically, you know, growing up, you know, it was super hard. Um, but yeah, for sure, it made me stronger, you know, um, um, learning two languages is super beneficial. So it helped me as far as like the, the food industry, because a lot of people, at least in California, they, they do speak Spanish, you know, they're more comfortable speaking Spanish. So at least I had, you know, that, that strength that, okay, well, now I speak two languages, right? So I used that as to my advantage, you know, talking to customers, you know, I was able to use that so it, it really did help me but like like how we said before you know it was difficult <laughs> you know in the yeah. beginning yeah yeah well it's interesting that you, you talk about the language barrier because you know when we shoot these podcasts and when we record these podcasts we don't necessarily record them in order um we we might um you know shoot two in a week and then and then drip them out over the course you know once a week for you know just to keep everything consistent. And the, the reason I'm bringing that up is because uh, it'll, it'll either be the next opus episode that, that comes out, or it could be probably the last episode that was released. Uh, we have somebody coming on whose name is Mila, mm -hmm. right? Mila, Mila Marcus. And um, you, you're, you know her more than I do. Um, but she, you know, just to kind of give her backstory. Um, I think first of all, she's become wildly successful. I mean, yeah. She does numbers um, that most affiliates can only dream of. So that that's going to be an incredible interview. So, um, you know, make sure you you find that if you're listening to this right now, make sure you, you probably either go back and find it or find it, you know, somewhere around this. Uh, Mila Marcus, it's going to be an incredible interview because she does things that she she does things that I didn't even think were possible with organic marketing. Um, and she's crazy. But but, you know, she, I think, is a little concerned about her her uh the fact that english is not her first language is is that mm -hmm. is that fair to say or yeah i mean as i mean as far as you know having an accent right you know mm -hmm. it's it's very it, it keeps you smaller basically as a person right because you're not confident mm -hmm. you know once you as soon as you have an accent you know you're not really confident in the beginning because you feel uncomfortable you know because you're not used to it something brand new mm -hmm. you know but the more you practice it the more you do it then the easier it gets. So I'm pretty sure this is how she feels this the same way that I, I felt, you know. Right. It's it, you know you get through it and it's uh, you know, yeah. You know, it's practice. always it, interesting. I can't relate to anyone who, um, has gone through that personally because you know for the most part I do most of my marketing in English speaking countries and um English is my first language and and really the only language I speak. Um, so I've never gone through it, but you know it's amazing like. So many people um, are concerned about it, you know, yeah. you know, and they, and they come to me and, and if I'm trying to help somebody, 
uh, feel confident about their marketing, you know, and, and, and bring them to a point where they're not just doing paid ads or they're not just doing blogs or whatever, but they're trying to get out there and take advantage of this opportunity that is, you know, video content, which is the future, you know, obviously the, the short answer is just rip the bandaid off. What do you have to lose? Mm -hmm. There's so much more to gain. So just keep practicing. I think I heard you say, and it'll get easier mm -hmm. and, and you'll get better at it. Um, but it's also amazing. Like the amount of times I hear this, um, you know, it, it, it's probably also an opportunity to find people who, who relate to you through that. Is, is that, is that, do you notice that a lot? Um, yeah. You know, 100%. Through, for example, through the people that you attract through your marketing. Exactly. Uh, basically, um, let's talk about a little bit about basically um, your ideal customer, right? So mm -hmm. your ideal customer literally is somebody that relates to you, somebody that has something in common with you. That's your ideal customer. So when I share my story and I tell people, you know, I'm an immigrant, you know, how to learn this language. How many people do you think have done the, the same thing, the same thing that I've done? So that's that's who becomes my ideal customer, you know, somebody in the food industry, um, somebody that had to learn English coming here, um, you know, depending on how how old they were, you know, you know, some people for if you're older, it's more difficult to learn something new, basically, especially a different language, right? Because it takes a lot of time. Um, when it's, when you're younger, it's a little bit easier, but yeah, people will relate the more you share your story, and that's how you find your ideal customer, you know, or somebody that you can you know sell talk to them and people will tell you you know i find i find i think you're a, a big inspiration you know because they, we come from the same background so that's something that i hear a lot yeah you know and, and you're absolutely right like i think you know to the to to my marketing and the people that i attract and i notice this especially if i bring a bunch of leads or customers that i've generated and created into like a zoom room and I look around that Zoom room, it's like, for me, it's like, oh, well, it's pretty much just a bunch of guys and ladies in their 40s or 50s who've probably got kids who are not newborns anymore. And, you know, as you look around the Zoom room, it's you really it's, you know, it's just a lot of people who mirror me. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's through telling your story and and just putting yourself out there and being your authentic self. And it, it really kind of works like magic. And I think back to this one time we were in a Zoom room and there was probably a dozen people in this Zoom room and you look around and most, of, you know, 80% of them are usually guys in their 40s or 50s because I happen to be a guy in my 40s. Um, so that's kind of the people I attract. And a lot of times they're people from Texas as well because I'm from Texas. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, they're, they're, they have the same story I already mentioned with the kids and stuff like that. But I'll never forget this Zoom room. And we're looking around and, you know, 80% were, were men in their 40s and 50s. There was a, a couple of ladies who were in their 40s or 50s. And then we saw this this girl over here in the in the corner. And, you know, she was in her in her 20s and probably her younger 20s. And, you know, we just couldn't figure out like, wow, she was obviously the the odd person out, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, not that... Not that I don't attract all kinds of people, but in that particular Zoom, it was like, well, here we are, a bunch of old folks, and here's this young girl. What's the, what's the what's the thing? What's the story? How did she get here, so to speak? It was yeah. kind of the <laughs> kind of the thought that was going through my mind. Um, and I'm talking to her. I realized she was in the restaurant industry, and she was a server, and she wanted to get out. And I was like, there it is. That's the connection. Yeah, because go. when I share my story, I talk about the restaurant industry and how I wanted to get out, how I was working sixty hours a week, and I just told the story earlier about how you know that's what i really wanted to do and yeah it's crazy how you say that because i had the same mentality too you know i told myself you know wow i really want to do this you know i'm gonna i'm gonna flip burgers for the rest of my life basically <laughs> so i i honestly thought that that was my life that was gonna be my life right so one thing that i for you guys listening um always say yes to new opportunities you know i know you might be uh thinking about, you know, okay, well, this is it, you know, I really like what I'm doing, but there's more out there, you know, than what you think you know, basically. So if you are trying to learn something new, um, do it, basically, you know, try it, you know, try it out. It, it doesn't always work, but you try it out, right? And that's exactly how we started this, you know I mean? I just tried it out and wow, I made it work. You know, and it got me to the position that I was before. 
but yeah, new opportunities are, I think they're amazing, honestly, you know? Well, and the thing is, is, is at least from my experience, you know, I always, I always tell people I'm, I, I'm, I'm not a, a ninja marketer. I'm not a wizard. I'm not one of those guys who just, you know, I'm not like Beethoven. I can't just get on the piano and start playing, you know, like that's not how I am a marketer, but I've, I've made every mistake there is to make pretty much. Sometimes I've made them twice, you know, and generally, luckily I don't make the same mistake three times, but I've certainly made quite <laughs> a few mistakes more than, more than once. And, um, you know, that's why after, you know, 10 years now, you have gotten to the point where it's like, okay, if I want to do something, if I want to start a project, if I want to create a new project and I thought about it and it looks like a good opportunity, then guess what? It's going to work because I know how to not only pass things through a filter to see if they're a great opportunity now because of all that experience, but I also know, you know what, what works, right. And what to implement, what levers to mm -hmm. pull and what leverage to look for. Um, but but the thing is, the reason I'm bringing that up is not to talk about how great I am because I have plenty to learn. And, and there's, you know, a lot of people who are doing way better than I am um, who I can learn from as well. But, you know, I think about all those experiences, all those failures, you know, the 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 $12,000 that was lost trying to sell on Amazon, the blog that, you know, I did for years that made almost no money, you know, the the selling of t-shirts and the, you know, the, you know, all the, the drop shipping and stuff that that never really panned out, right. Never became my path to freedom. I can tell you, I learned something from, from all of those experiences. And if you talk about saying yes to new things, right. And that's what kind of brought this up and triggered this thought for me, you know, whatever it is, if it looks like a good opportunity, then dive in. Um, whether it's, it could be anything, you know, I, for example, if you're watching this on the video, I can see over your shoulder there, the click funnels 2.0 little oh, phone yeah. thing, thing back there. <laughs> so that, that, um, you know, recently we went to the, uh, click funnels event, you know, funnel hacking live 2022. And that was one of those things where I didn't really have any awards to pick up this year. So I didn't know if I was going to go. That was probably my ego talking, but I was like, well, I don't know. I, the, the previous year I went there for the award um, this year. I was like, I don't really have any awards to pick up, but it's an opportunity. So I said yes to it. And I went into that event and I took away probably two to three amazing things, amazing shifts, amazing changes. One of them happens to be this podcast that y'all are listening to right now. This started as a result of going to that. So that's, that's crazy. Um, but I think that's, that's the realistic expectations that folks should have when they're trying to grow their business is some people will take a course or go to a seminar and expect to find everything they need. Right. Whereas look for the one or two things that are going to shift you know, your business and be grateful that you got them. And the more opportunities that you say yes to, the more conferences you attend, the more speakers that you see, the more books that you read, the more courses that you take, the more uh, people that you talk to, or the more podcasts that you go on and start, the more little tiny lessons that are going to come into your, into your life. And it's going to, it's going to grow your toolbox. Um, and, and that's what really makes the difference. And you yeah. know, you, you just were at an event this this past weekend so i'd love to kind of take the opportunity to to dive into that a little bit if i could that was my big lead up there right i almost almost got <laughs> off track a little bit for a little while but but the thing is is, is you were out there at click funnels uh headquarters uh this past weekend and i'd love to just kind of see how that went who you met uh name yeah. drop a little bit because i've never met a marketer who didn't want their name dropped so feel free to name drop a little bit and uh <laughs> you just tell us uh how that went no, yeah. So it was a uh, um, ClickFunnels is launching this big um, software. You know, a different. It's a different software of ClickFunnels, but it's basically the the upgrade, right? It's so their two version, of, as they're calling 2. it. Right? Yeah. So now ClickFunnels is called that. Like the regular one is called ClickFunnels Classic, and then the new one is called ClickFunnels Two So it was a big launch. Um, a bunch of it was a five day challenge that they were doing for people to get get into buying Two Point basically. So they invited a bunch of affiliates um to the headquarters in Idaho. 
So that was a cool experience in you know, Idaho. You know, you will think like, why Idaho, right? Well, that's where they have their their headquarters. So I was able to, you know, meet a bunch of cool people, a bunch of speakers. You know, for once, Russell Brunson was there, of course. Um, it was cool. I got to take a picture with him, so it was kind of cool. Um, I also Myron Golden, um, Eileen Wilder, uh, Jenna Kutcher. You know, some of the speakers we have heard them in Final Hacking Life. But this was like more intimate, you know, it was just a room of, you know, 20 to 30 people. And we still had big names, you know, in, in in there. But yeah, it was a great experience. You know, we were all having lunch together. We were all networking, um, sharing what, what kind of business you have, you know, what do you do to get to the next level? And one thing that it was cool is that they invited uh, some of the affiliates to go on stage. And basically they do like a give and ask. Okay, so it's literally a 10 minute presentation. You can just say whatever you want, basically. And you basically give everybody, the audience, something, you know, uh, some type of knowledge, you know, and then at the end of your presentation, then you ask for something. So if you're struggling with something on your business, you will ask and then uh, all the affiliates in the room will just give you advice, basically. So it was a it was a cool experience. I actually never been a part of anything like this, you know. Uh, we have been to masterminds before, but this was just a little different, right? You know, and it it was this it made was me cool. was a little bit different level, wasn't it? <laughs> oh my god! I mean, there's like seven, eight, even nine figure entrepreneurs in that room, right? So it was it was nerve wracking, you know, but at the same time, um, really exciting because you got to learn from these people in this close type of setting you know we had lunch together and yeah it was super cool you know one of the one of the speakers that came was actually Grant Cardone you know I always been watching his videos you know uh about you know real estate Miami investing and all of this stuff but he actually showed up and I was I was like what you know this is crazy you know I, I didn't even have an idea that this guy was going to show up and be part of ClickFunnels you know he even he's a ClickFunnels user as well so just being in the same room with all these people, it just, I don't know, it, it's a learning experience the, the whole way. And it was a new opportunity that I say yes, yeah. you know? And then the, the thing about it is that this weekend also, my family was in Vegas, you know? I, I was supposed to go to Vegas with them. But then this new opportunity showed up and then there's no way I could have missed this. You hear me? Especially if we're trying to get to the next level and, you know, uh, this this new opportunity, I talked to my wife about it and I was like, should I go, you know, to Las Vegas with my family so we can have fun or go to this event? And my wife told me, you should go to this event because the amount of knowledge, the amount of things that you'll learn are probably going to be more beneficial in our future. So that was my sure, goal going there. Yeah. And I'm sure, uh, after the fact that you feel like you made the right decision. Yeah. Oh yeah. 100%. Of course, family is, is it was nice, you know, going over uh, there, but we can always fly back, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You go again. <laughs> that's the, that, that's nice when you can say that, right. That's the, that's yeah. the beauty of it. Yeah. Wow. So who, um, was there anybody there who like, was like, I don't know. I mean, you already mentioned the fact that you were surprised that Grant Cardone, you know, with his busy schedule managed to, sh you know, show up and be oh, in the yeah. room. So, so that's amazing there. Um, but was there any, um, anything that surprised you? Any, 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 any secrets, any, any piece of knowledge that you came away with that you can share? Or basically I'm just trying to, to pick your brain because I wasn't in that room. So I'm trying to use <laughs> this as an opportunity to, to, to have you spill the secrets or, or anything that you took away from it, you know, beyond what you've already mentioned. Yeah, I mean, uh, Myron Golden was one of the ones that actually hit me really a lot, basically. You know, he's the one that I shared the story in the beginning of this episode. Um, and then going back to the story as well, you know, he, as far as, you know, something needs to go down or to go up, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense and it made a lot of sense to me. You know, at some point I was broken, you know, and I used that to go up and then go to the next level. And then he, he gave another example, like, for example, uh, a seed, you know, the seed always wants to be a tree right but in order for the seed to become a tree it first needs to go in the ground it first needs to go in the ground okay and then the seed you know the more water it gets first it grows down and then after that it grows up so Interesting. that's mm -hmm. so i related that to my story right and it actually it motivated me so much so much 
Yeah. Well, that 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 is interesting because it, it's it's like there's two different stories about having to go down to go up again. Two different like real world examples, you know, and Mm -hmm. and you don't think about a tree. You think about a tree, you plant a seed, what happens? It grows up, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we see, right? But what we don't see is the the fact that the roots, you know, the tap root has to come down first. Otherwise there will be no base. There will be no opportunity for the tree to grow up. That's really interesting. It's, it's like the, um, you know, one of those phrases, you know, you always see someone who just, just burst onto the scene and all of a sudden everybody's talking about them and they're making all this money and they're, you know, whether it's affiliate commissions or course sales or selling this new product. And and they're always like, yeah, it's an overnight success, seven years in the making. Right. Like, and, and and that's, that's a common narrative. You know, you you don't Mm -hmm. see the seven years of struggles that that person went through before. Boom he became the overnight success. Just like you don't see the roots going down into the ground before you, this little sound before you go up. That was a good share. I'm going to, I'm going to hang on to that. I'm going to remember that one it has to go down yeah. before it has to go. Up. I, I like, I like the, the, I like the, like the tree version because it, you don't see it. It's behind the scenes. It's what nobody you sees. Even see when it. you walk through a forest and you see, I, I was watching this video today and I think it was on YouTube or something and it could have been a news story or it could have been a story from two years ago that just started trending, but they found this tree in the Amazon that was like 250 feet tall and it's the tallest tree in the Amazon. And, and they had to, apparently as the story goes, I don't know if this is true or not, I didn't research it, but they, they saw it and they found it from space and then they took this expedition to go find it and they couldn't find it. But anyways, they get there eventually after all this trial and error and they see this massive tree, you know, they're looking up and they see this massive tree, but, but that tree, you know, that everyone's paying attention was possible because of the roots yep. that are in the ground that went, went down first. And, and, and if you want to do great things, man, you gotta, gotta go down before you go up. That's amazing. That was a good share. I, I really enjoyed <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. I feel um, like I, I feel like I was at the event now. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I, I never heard, um, this guy speak and as he was talking and I, I was, it was so engaging. I was just listening and every little thing that he would say, I would just, I will find a way for me to be relatable. Right. And that's what I was doing. Um, it was amazing, honestly, listening to this guy on stage. Did um, another person. Feel... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say when listening to that, did he make you feel like you could kind of do anything at that point? Was that, was that part of it or? It made me realize what my life, basically, what I have gone through, you know, like like just listening to him telling those stories, it made me realize what I have gone through with my life. And then all those moments, it started making more sense, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Started to get some sort of understanding of, yeah, cool. Understanding why things happened to me, you know, it just, it was like, wow, you know, like it just blew my mind, basically. And then you think yeah. going forward, the the idea there is when something happens negative to to maybe view it in a different light while it's happening. You think that's the, um, maybe not in the beginning, but eventually, yeah. The more you get over stuff, then you'll start realizing, you know, um, that it, whatever is going on is is it, probably meant to be. You know, the the your life is just gonna life is gonna keep throwing you things, you know. Yeah. Well, all right, yeah. who else? What else? And okay, so another speaker that I saw, um, Eileen Wilder. So I am terrified on speaking on stage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like I get super nervous. Even doing this podcast, you know, I'm super nervous. Um <laughs> and going back to you know, English being my second language, my but it's my own insecurities, basically, right? Basically. Um, but yeah, she like did a speech, you know, how to get how to feel more comfortable, you know, on stage, how to be a better speaker. Um but I don't really have much to share about that experience, but just that, just that what she said started making more sense. You know, she has a book coming out. I'm probably going to buy it and read it um, just so I can be a better speaker, you know? So that's something that I always struggle with and just doing this podcast, I feel super uncomfortable, you know, but it's just something that I need to shake loose and get over it basically. Right. Like take, like how you say, take the bandaid off, you know? So this is, it's out of my comfort zone, but I want to do it because I want to evolve my life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just going to go ahead and share the screen here for 
anyone who who's watching this maybe on YouTube or what have you. Um, but that's her, right? Eileen Wilder. Yep. And uh, she said she has a new book that's coming out soon. Or it's yeah, already I out. Think, I think we got it actually. A Final Hacking Life. Okay. Okay. Perfect. That's the new yeah. book. But yeah, I mean, I pull up her site right here, and the 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 quote on the front is "The world needs what you alone have to offer." So, you know, that's that's uh, I guess that's kind of her message, right? Like helping mm-hmm. people understand, you know, that you know they everyone yeah, has something of value. Uh, to offer and, and and the world needs it and it it's the world needs your unique perspective and your unique angle you know we talked earlier in this podcast about you know you start to attract people who are kind of like you and and there is some sort of 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 bond as long as you're willing to put yourself out there and reveal those things about you and and that's the thing like I think people um who are afraid to add organic or content to their marketing is, is not everyone's going to like you, but that's okay because there are going to people who be people who like you for you. And those are the people who are out there in the world that needs what you alone have to offer as Eileen Wilder says, Mm -hmm. and those people are going um, to become your customers or your affiliate commissions or your new clients or, you know, or, or your network that will help you grow your, your net worth as they say. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Telling your story, right. Telling your story is the best thing that you can do. You know, even though even if you're shy or you're going through, you you went through too much just by telling your story, somebody else is going to be related to that. You know, somebody else, just because you went through something doesn't mean you're the only person in the world that has gone through that. So the more you're open about you sharing your story, other people are gonna um they're gonna feel like you know they they can trust you even more. Yeah. And if you look into the greats, you know, all the greats do it, you know. It was back when Ty Lopez when it was in his garage, he was talking about the 27 bucks he had in his pocket and the fact that he grew up in a trailer or what have you. And if you if you look at you know Gary Vaynerchuk, who you know was one of the biggest I don't know, entrepreneurial influencers uh, in the world. And, you know, it's, it's the same thing. You know, I worked at the wine store. I didn't make any money. All my friends went out on Saturday night while I was working in the wine store. And, you know, we grew the wine store and we, you know, we started wine library TV and I want to buy the jets and I love resale mm-hmm. and flipping And And he's, he produces probably a hundred pieces of content a week. And he says the same six to 10 things over and over and over again. But what is he doing? He's just revealing his story, um, you know, in, in, in unique ways. And he gives other value as well. I'm not saying that's all he does, but but he he reveals the story again and again and again. And just to your point, Andre, like, look at not what the greats are saying, but really dissect what the great marketers are doing. And mm-hmm. they're using stories, right? Everybody's using stories. Yeah, and that's one of the goals why we wanted to have this podcast as well. You know, of course, we want to talk about our, the guest speakers, you know, their success. But I want to, we want to dig deep into, okay, well, what did they do to get to the point, right? Because I want, we want to hear what they had to say when they're they were at the bottom, right? You know, and what they did to go up. Yeah, and that's why I'm so excited about this podcast. And I think in the first episode, I said. You know, I was kind of joking. Maybe it was a little bit of self-deprecation or what have you. But I said, yeah, I think it's the, and we're involved in marketing, the, the stupid name with a real, lot of real deep meaning, right? And, um, you know, that's why I'm so excited about this um, this podcast is, is because I think it is is an evolved marketing approach in in action. Like people can can follow us and watch this podcast if they want to and and follow the journey in real time. And what I mean by that is I don't have anything for sale right now. You don't have anything for sale right now. I mean, maybe we do, but we're not talking about it. We're not, you know, pushing affiliate links right now. Mm-hmm. We're not, we're not taking on sponsorships. Not that anyone's going to sponsor a brand new podcast anyways, maybe, but we we have no monetization plan. We're not going to go in and, and create a podcasting course and sell it for $2,000. That's not our mission. Our mission, as you said, is just to tell stories see where it goes, enjoy the process. And we think if we stay consistent, do this long enough, 
put the effort in that maybe some year, one, two, five, ten years down the road, this could be a pretty big deal that makes a healthy amount of money. Well, once again, that mm-hmm. is not our goal, but that's what is so right. exciting about this to me is in its evolved approach. It's just telling stories, talking. That's all it is. And and, and providing value and sharing those little tidbits when when we go to an event or we we learn something new or we try something that works. But yeah, just sharing stories and, and digging in, like you said, to the what did you say to when they were at the bottom, when they were the right. guests? I yeah. Want, I, I want yeah, I want to see how they were able to go up from there, you know. No, it's 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 exciting. And then just like like how we say, you know, telling your story, you got your listeners are gonna be able to relate to whoever we bring here just by sharing stories. You know, we're gonna talk about business a lot, but we're also gonna talk about, you know, experiences. And that's right. a cool thing about, you know, just starting the, this podcast. So we'll just have to make sure that none of our none of our invited guests have ever heard this podcast before. So they come in without fear of of us digging too deep right <laughs> right no, we'll, think, see, we'll see we'll see how it is you know <laughs> we'll see how it goes exactly it's kind of a it's kind of a work in progress here so yeah all right Brian, so now coming in coming to an end to this episode um is there anything you want to tell the audience you know before we go as always i appreciate anyone who's made it this far i don't know for 30 40 50 minutes into this episode but if you're still listening we we do appreciate you and and we hope to to bring a lot of value here going forward but um you know i just i just can't stop thinking about you know the the conversation we have today about you know having to go down before you go up i mean you know you talked about it with 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 your incident with the law and, and and losing a year you know when you thought you were trying to work your way up the quote unquote corporate ladder you know i talked about it when you know i i you know i i knew in my heart i was going to you know go from making you know 40 whatever thousand dollars a year working at the small restaurant in michigan to I me mean, i knew i was going to be making 80 90 100 thousand dollars a year working in downtown chicago and 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 it didn't work out and I had to go back down before I went up just like the tree roots, just like the Eagle. I mean, you know, for me, I think that's the, that's the big takeaway is, is, you know, there's a process Mm -hmm. and no one gets to cheat the process. Um, Just like you can't, you can't launch a new, new content platform. You can't launch a new YouTube channel. You can't launch a new podcast and just start making millions of dollars overnight. You can't cheat the process, but just, you know, even digging deeper, you know, the, the process of nature, you can't cheat it, work hard, um, you know, set goals. Uh, and I think, uh, say yes to say yes to opportunities, right? New opportunities. Yeah. yeah. And I guess, I mean, it's just kind of enjoy the ride, right? Yeah, trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. Well, all right, guys. Thank, yeah. Thank you yeah, so Andre, much for thank listening. You. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening, Andre. Thanks for spending some time with me today. And uh, I guess we'll see you all in the next episode. Yeah. <laughs>